Morning. Morning. A uh, good day for spraying, hopefully. Hopefully that wind behaves. It's supposed to. It's supposed to just sit like this for most of the morning and then drop off a bit. Yeah, yep. So you've already done a tank, yeah? Yeah. Cool. Uh, well, I'll just grab all the stuff out of your car and then, yeah, leave it to it. Because that, that's got you sorted for the day, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, that is. Yep. Cool banana. Hopefully that wind does behave, it gets a bit strong. <laughs> So we've got the uh, the batteries for Grover. These uh, belts are for the uh, old auger. And in here, we've got wheel bearings for the uh, Wildcat. So that's spares. These are fuel filter. Uh, sorry, oil filters for the old augers. These are for Louis. So fuel, fuel and oil. That's an oil filter for the uh, the 13 inch auger. And then down here we've got the, the dust covers and cones and stuff for the uh, bearings. So today I'll obviously change those batteries over so that they are, uh, well, so that Grove is good again and we can move it, park it back in the shed. Uh, I reckon I'll start the uh, oil and fuel filter changes on Louis. And uh, first up, I've got to wash the uh, wash Wally because the battery drive yesterday there was a, well, it's either acid or water, but you could smell, you know, the acid from the batteries. Uh, but there was also water in, oh, there you go, you can see, you can see there was definitely acid. So I'm just gonna uh, give the tray a nice wash so that uh, that's all off. Uh, so yeah, and then I do need to park that down at some point, but uh, I need an extra person and Henry's busy. Time to change some batteries over. I can only get my fingers in here to get the box open. There we go. They're green. As long as they, uh, they're they gonna face the right way, that's all that matters. I'm gonna have to put you down. Right. <sighs> Got a little thingy on the side here. Data sale, so that's just a warranty. Assuming there's one on this one. And I would assume correctly, don't need that. All facial expressions made during the course of this video are uh, to be forgiven. Batteries are heavy and they're awkward. I always love seeing in the movies how uh, you know, the rock picks up a battery one handed and just throws it. Now, he's a very strong man, so I'm sure he probably can, but to just lift it up with ease and throw them, it's just, it's hilarious really. Um, batteries are stupid heavy. But anyway, get my spanner around the right way, there we go. Now I'm careful not to touch any metal here because I don't want to spark it on myself. Oh, there's so much metal around. Oh, I'm gonna get zapped. Again, all facial expressions made are to be forgiven. It's the facial expression expression of concentration. I'm 
Yeah, it shows you how knackered the batteries are. Uh, for those who don't know when changing a battery, uh, negative is obviously fine if you touch a negative terminal and touch metal, that's fine. But if you're touching a positive terminal and touch metal, you're going to arc the battery out. Nothing bad happens, it's just a whole lot of sparks come and you, you crap yourself. You know, you get a big, you don't, you don't get shocked or anything because it's, you know, it earths out up on the metal. It just scares the crap out of you. Uh, but yeah, these batteries, you can tell are knackered because I just hit the uh, air tank here whilst uh, going up and uh, nothing sparked. So, you can tell these batteries are completely toast. Give me the little handle. There we go. Right. Well, the positive terminal is actually pretty good. The negative terminal, it's got a little bit of corrosion on, so I'm just going to grab some emery paper. And I'll be back. The, uh, the bracket isn't going down as tight as what I'd like compared to the, uh, the old batteries. I didn't actually give them a shake um, just to see how secure they were in there. But uh, yeah, they had a lot of dirt and dust around them so that would have helped. So uh, yeah, I can, even though it's tight, I've got it right up on it, it can still move quite easily. Uh, I'll see what this front one is like, but uh, if it still moves, uh, basically what I'll do is I'll just add an extra bracket in here on the back there just so they don't slide around. Um, obviously the terminals are going to hold them, but you don't want that. So <laughs> yeah, we'll just see how we go. It should be fine, but yeah. Okie dokie, artichokey. Now, obviously it's brand new batteries, it's gonna start, but I'm obviously gonna start her up just to check before uh, we chuck the panel back on. I must remember to turn that off when I uh, park this away.
Right. That shouldn't have happened. Right, I am a little bit confused as to what's going on. Uh, the batteries are obviously on the correct way. I, I even went and double checked just to make sure. I got the voltmeter out just to uh, check that it was all 24 volt. You know, it was, you know, the batteries, new batteries weren't flat. They weren't, they're putting out 24 and a half volts. Uh, uh, you can see the uh, fire suppression system just here. That green light is still flashing, so there is battery power. Uh, but there is no power to the cab. There is uh, power to the jump start receptacle down there. Um, it's like a, a plug-in thing that looks like that. Uh, that is obviously for mine sites. So my next option, I'm just gonna, uh, there's a book behind me. I'm gonna get that book out and just check the fuses. Uh, I believe they're all down here. That, that down there and I'll just uh, go through and just see if I've blown a fuse somehow. But yeah, not sure. Uh, yeah. From my, uh, my bit of diagnosing, it's the isolator switch. So this one up here, just, just here. Now I know it's the isolator switch because, uh, well, I've got absolutely no power to the cab at the moment. None. But, uh, when I was just playing with this and just slowly going, you know, you could hear it sort of go, like, uh, arc, I guess you'd, you'd call it. Um, and I eventually got it, and then up in the cab, I had life. Went to start it again and went tick, tick, tick. So, now, ideally, all you'd do, John, is you'd just pull that off, mate. Give it a bit of a clean on the old terminals down the side. Bob's your uncle. How'd I do that? Look at this. Look at this, it's all bloody welded. It's a welded frame. I don't have, you know, spaghetti arms. I can't come in from that side. And, yeah, so if I start to do this, It'd just fall in. And then, uh, yeah. I don't know. I'll, uh, I'll figure it out. Right, a few more dials open now. I just contacted the guys that I bought it off. Uh, the, uh, so it's an ex-mining crowd, uh, well, ex-hire crowd. Uh, and they were very helpful. Um, basically just, yeah. What I really wanted to do is get this off, the isolator off, and I want to clean it up because uh, I feel that's my issue. But I don't know how to get in there because it's it's a welded frame holding up the hydraulic tank. Uh, basically, the consensus is undo this, undo that, and hopefully just pull it up, pull it down here, so I can so I can get to it. Uh, but yeah, we went through, um, went over the starter motor and with the voltmeter. We're only getting three volts to that, so obviously there's something uh, in the line back to the batteries. That's the issue, and my guess is it is that uh, that that isolator. I just really want to get in there and clean that. Uh, I'm going to bend my arms in a way they shouldn't. Let's, let's see how we go. It's not going to work doing that. Uh, you guys aren't going to be able to see. Up where the light is, is where the, uh, that's the isolator. Now, the isolator uh, has got a cord that goes down to the jump start receptacle, which is just below the, uh, the isolator. So I'm not gonna be able to get it to fall down and work on it. And it's, I can't reach my arms across there physically, that's too far. That's the width of the machine from this side. Um, not, I'm not a small, nimble man. I, I mean, you, it's a child would have to fit through this little square here to get through to that side. Uh, I can't take that frame out. This is uh, not ideal. Okay, so I, uh, I called Danny Smith, who is uh, a mechanic, who um, a heavy diesel mechanic that does all the sort of cat gear. 
Uh, if you've watched Jack out the back, he uses them a fair bit for all his uh, heavy duty stuff. Um, so yeah, he's actually going to Will's across the road on Sunday because Will's loader has uh, got an issue. Uh, and he's going to pop over here and have a look at this for me. Um, he obviously knows what he's doing, so he'll be able to get in there and get that eyesighter switched out. I would be here for days trying to get my arms in there. I, he obviously knows exactly how to get in there and swap it out, so that's what he's going to do for me. So, <sighs> we shall just leave Grover here, and I will get to packing uh, all those other filters and everything uh, away in their appropriate spots. Right, so we've got all the things to put away now. Um, I won't get to doing that oil and fuel on Louis today. That'll be a next week job. Uh, today the uh, monster auction, it's a Friday for me, the monster auction is on down at uh, Cascade. So uh, yeah, sort of pack up all my stuff and uh, yeah, head on down to that and go and uh, Probably not bid on anything, but uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. So there's three belts here, because you've got three dry belts, and I've just got myself a bit of cardboard, because who knows how long these could actually stay up in the shed for. And just writing exactly what it is on there, because after making that, uh, after making the, um, the words are going to come from me. I'm, I'm losing all my words. All the belts up there clean in the loft. I uh, want to try and keep it as clean as I can, neat as I can. And uh, if we label everything, then it means that uh, things won't get lost or misplaced. Also means come harvest time, if uh, I need to send somebody up here to grab some bolts. <laughs> grab some bolts. Grab a belt. So we've got all the, all the belts here. I can just come. It's just there, on the auger drive and hydraulic. Get the old auger, sorted. Sure you're getting a glamorous view of me right now. So, like I said this morning, these are all the, uh, the oil filters for the augers and also for, uh, for Louis. So we'll just chuck these into our uh, filter fridge and uh, get to changing them at the uh, appropriate time. Oh, that wasn't good. So, uh, just a fridge full of filters. Where am I going to put them so that we uh, we know? Actually, what I should let me get sorted here. What I should do is uh, actually go through this and uh, clean it out. Uh, just so that, um, you know, we don't have the big air compressor anymore. I don't know what that, that says, that's for a Nissan, we don't have any Nissans anymore. So, just so that we, um, yeah, we know exactly what everything is and we're not keeping filters that we shouldn't have. Now, I haven't written on them, but I know what they are. So, yeah. And finally, is the, uh, the wheel bearings for the Wildcat. Uh, I've already got one set up there, ready to go. But uh, you'll see come harvest, because it's, it's a tandem, the wheels can tend to get on quite an angle as, uh, as it turns. With a lot of weight on there, it's obviously not good. Uh, so we're going to obviously use one actually next week is when we're planning to change it so we're going to use one next week when we fix it then I want to make sure I've got spares in the shed now these are the uh, the dust covers for it now we don't didn't actually have any of these last year so we were having to save them so it's nice that we've got uh, some some proper dust covers and again we are just going to label it all because, uh, God, it helps when you label things. Because you just don't know what things are when you go. When we go to clean that shed out of the, the loft again in uh, another five years, 
when uh, it's all messy again. And we're going to go, what, is, what was this one for? Now we know. It's for the wildcat. So, uh, see, we've got, uh, got some just there. Let me find somewhere to put you. So now we've just got, got adequate enough. We don't have any wheel bearings for the for the other one, the Grand King, but we'll pull it out. We're gonna do work on it anyway, and just we'll check them. Uh, what we do have, the things that break on that, uh, I guess I'll show you later, but where the uh, PTO uh, comes from the tractor, it goes to a mounted section, and then it goes from that mounted section down to the gearbox. If the guys turn too sharp or you know something bad happens, they break. So that is what these are for. And uh, with that, guys, that's going to be the end of the video. Uh, not a very exciting one. You got to watch me struggle with the uh, with the a very simple job. Should have been simple. Should have just been batteries in, started, parked away. Louis was going to be pulled in. We've got Louis sorted, but that didn't happen. So uh, come Monday, hopefully that's all sorted and fixed. And uh, if not, we'll know what the issue is. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Don't forget to check out the Glass Cage podcast. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one.